Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. Glad you're with us today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, fun show today. We're going to talk about the best and worst foods for your brain. Now, all of us should be concerned about this. We all have a brain. Uh, some of us don't use it as well as others. But we're going to give you uh, the tips of things you're doing and things you've got to stop doing and things you need to do. So it's a lot of fun. If you're new to the show, the way this works is pretty simple. I will talk for 24 minutes. You, whatever platform you're on, can type in uh, any health questions you have. At the 24-minute break, my producers will go ahead and ask me those questions. Uh, Garrett and John will ask me any questions you type in. I'll answer them. We do another 24-minute segment, and then we answer more questions. So it's a great opportunity. If you're listening live, please put in hashtag live, the hashtag symbol live. If you're listening on a replay, put in the hashtag symbol replay. And I appreciate that because it just lets the bots know that people are listening, and so they raise us up in the ranking. So uh, that's great. And Garrett, are we ready to rock and roll all night and party every day? All right, here we go. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. I am happy you're with me today. What I'm going to talk about today are the best and worst foods for your brain. Now, all of us should listen to this because we all have brains. Uh, some people use them better than others. And we're going to do everything we can to get you to eat the right foods and not eat the bad foods. The good news about all nutrition, not just today, is that you have control over what goes in your mouth. You decide what you're going to eat. And I used this line 40 years ago. I'll use it again today. You have to eat anyway. You might as well eat good food. It really is just that simple. You just have to make better choices. And that's what it's all about when it comes to nutrition, the best choice you can make at that moment in time. And if you could remember that simple line, life's going to be better, your brain's going to be better. Now, since about two out of every three Americans are going to experience cognitive impairment by the time they reach 70, which means their brain isn't functioning as well as it should, it's pretty understandable that you find ways to support the brain. And again, let me say that again. Two out of three Americans are going to start to have some brain issues by the time they hit 70. Now, I don't want that. I want you to be sharp from the day you're born to the day you die. I want you to get better until the day you die, not reduce it. One way to reduce this, the, the risk of having the damage, is by cutting out some of the bad foods. Now, optimal brain health, minimize inflammation, minimize toxic exposure, increase uh, flexibility, uh, me uh, metabolic flexibility. You want to increase blood flow, oxygenation, mitochondria. If you don't know what the mitochondria is, the mitochondria is a part of the cell that generates electricity, generates energy. And many times when it comes to a disease, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, brain functions, it's the mitochondria that slows down its function and sometimes stops its function. And that's when the cells can't generate electricity and they just can't work. So we got to take care of that. You know, there was an old song and the line in the song was feed your head. Well, we're going to talk about feeding your head today. Things you can do to get it going. Now, there's a line of there's a new buzzword out. It's called nootropic. If you never heard this term, nootropics are supplements that help your brain work better. And there, there's some good ones on the market. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But a lot of the nootropic market is junk. It's dangerous. I mean, you can take little, uh, you can take a nicotine patch and cut it in little squares and put a little bit on your body to give you a, a slow release of nicotine throughout the day. Well, that's kind of considered a nootropic. Doesn't mean it's good for you. You can get uh, drugs from China. Doesn't mean they're good for you. So we want to make sure we're getting nootropics in the body that are actually good for you. So be careful if something says nootropic, what is it? I saw one product out there, and it said nootropic helps your brain work, and blah, blah. And I looked at the ingredients. It was caffeine. Well, it's a lot cheaper to buy a cup of coffee than to buy these supplements, and I don't recommend the caffeine anyway. So the, the, the key is taking quality supplements, quality anything. My German grandfather, I, I love quoting him, uh, he said, Joseph, always buy the best it's always cheaper. So, yeah, you can do you know, a cheap caffeine hit. You can do a cigarette hit, get nicotine in the body. It might give you a burst of energy, but it really isn't helping the brain work better. It's just giving you a little more energy. So things like Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, uh, Omega-3 Fatty Acids, Nitric Oxide, those are all nootropics to help your brain work better. Those are the ones I take every day. You probably should too. So you want to give your body quality and don't be fooled by the term nootropic. If you have a question about it, send it to me, and I'll give you my opinion on it. So a lot of factors come into play when it comes to brain health. Some of them you have control over, some you don't. You don't have control over genetics. You don't have control over your age. 
But there are a lot of things that can keep your noggin in tip-top shape. Uh, You avoid cigarette smoking. You include physical activity. uh, You maintain a healthy weight. Uh, Right before I I did this show, I just went for a 15-minute walk just to get my blood flowing, get my energy going, get my, my brain kicked in. So little things like that. If you don't like going outside, clean your house, vacuum, mop, wash the windows, clean the toilets. All of that, as long as the body's in motion, is what the body wants. The brain wants motion, and you've got to give it that. Now, when it comes to your dietary choices, this is so well established. This is not even debatable. High antioxidant-rich foods like fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Omega-3 fatty acids. I'm going to talk about those in a second. What kind is the best? What kind is the worst? B vitamins, uh, eating a lot of fruits and vegetables, of course, gives you the nutrients that your body needs. So the cleaner you eat, the more fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds you eat, the closer you get to a plant-based diet, the happier your brain is going to be. As you start to drift away from that, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, the brain is not going to be happy with you. So here's the thing when it comes to nutrition, and I've been teaching nutrition now for 40 years. And I have many, many degrees in it. I research every day. When it comes to nutrition, you start making little changes. This is what most people do. And they feel better. Then you make another little change. And you feel better. And you make a little change. And eventually, you start to realize a couple of weeks, a couple of months down the road, hey, wait a minute. I've had this total metamorphosis of my lifestyle. I didn't realize it. Man, am I happy I did that. No one in all the years I've been coaching, teaching, treating, No one has ever regretted changing their diet to a better diet, ever. So that's a pretty good track record after all these years, tens of thousands of people. So eating a nutrient-dense diet packed with, let's say, antioxidants, the healthy fats, the micronutrients, the the vitamins, minerals, um, they're great. On the flip side, if you're eating bad foods, it's going to affect your cognitive or your brain function. So let's talk about some of the worst foods you can eat, then we'll talk about some of the best foods. So I'm going to start out with fried foods, you know, fried chicken, fried anything, really. It tastes good. I like fried food. I used to eat it. I don't anymore. And I like it. But this is how I look at my food, my life, my diet. Is this going to be good for me or is it going to be bad for me? If it's going to be bad for me, I don't do it. And a lot of times I'll pick something up and I'll look at it. Oh, this looks really good. Oh, it has canola oil in it. Canola oil is an omega-6 fatty acid. Omega-6 fatty acids can affect the mitochondria in the brain, slow down the energy production. You know what? Not going to do it. It's not worth it to me. That's what it is. Is it worth it? Is it worth the risk? No, it's not. You eat fried food, chicken, things like this, your brain is not going to be happy. Now, they did a meta-analysis study. This was in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Meta-analysis is when they look at a bunch of different studies and they say, okay, what are most of the studies saying? And the meta-analysis showed a relationship between more fried food and increased risk of cognitive health concerns. Now, I've been to hospitals. I've been to senior housing centers. Kills me when I see what these people are eating. I've been to schools. It kills me. It kills them, too. I'm, I'm metaphorical. They're literal. That they're doing this to these people. And then they say, oh, these uh, senior housing. It's so hard to deal with these people. It's so hard to take care of these people. They're grouchy. They're tired. They can't control their bowels. They get in fights. They're angry. Well, you fed them the junk that started to shut down the brain. How about you feed them something healthy? Well, we don't know how to do that. Or I can't be feeding them expensive foods. It's not expensive to eat healthy. In fact, it's way less expensive to eat healthy if you know what you're doing. You know, generally speaking, a can of beans is a whole lot cheaper than a pound of meat. And so there's levels of health, of course. But yeah, beans and rice is much cheaper than a stick of potatoes. Now, I'm not saying beans and rice is the healthiest food, but it's healthier than what most people are eating. So you're going to save a ton of money by cutting out these bad foods. But the fried foods create trans fats, and trans fats get into the cells, and they affect the brain function of mitochondria. Uh, the brain can't transmit impulses like it used to. And so you just shut down. The brain goes, I can't work on this. I can't work under these conditions. It's like putting water in your gasoline tank in your car. You put water in your gas tank, car isn't going to run. It might run a little bit, but it's not going to run very well. Another thing, and I bring this up because just the other day, somebody sent me a message through our website, drjoe.com, and they said, Dr. Joe, I wish you would put your supplements in a gummy form because I like gummies. Okay. 
They're sweet. They taste good gummies. They're chewy. I've had them. It's candy. It's still pretty much candy. Now, you can put supplements in there, but first of all, you have to eat a lot more gummies to get the same amount of, I don't know, B vitamins that we have in Dr. Joe's B-Complex. So you're going to get a lot more sugar. Some gummies are made with animal products like gelatin, which is not good for you. And so you're going to get the sugar, you're going to get the chemicals, you're going to get the dyes, you're going to get the artificial flavors, you're going to get the gelatin if, you, if it's in there. So it's not a good food. So why would I take my supplements, which are, I consider some of the finest in the world, it's the ones I take every day, why would I destroy it by mixing it with sugar and gelatin and toxic chemicals and additives? It's not really the best thing for you. Now, too much sugar consumption is linked to impaired memory and increased risk of dementia. So I wouldn't give you a supplement that's going to increase your risk of having a, a health issue. So because of this, you're better off just taking the pills. Now, somebody said, Dr. Joe, I don't like swallowing capsules. Okay, great. Here's your answer. Open up the capsule, sprinkle the supplement on your food. You won't taste it, and you get it in your body. Problem solved. Well, Dr. Joe, I, I don't like big pills. If it's a pill, put it in a food processor, grind it up into a powder, mix it in with your other foods. Problem solved. Uh, some people, you know, everybody has a little different way they want to do things. So we have to do the most effective, most uh, affordable, convenient way of doing it for the majority of our customers, our patients. So again, if it's a capsule, open it up. Mix it with water and drink it if you want to. Sprinkle it on your salad. Do it that way. So there are ways around it all. In fact, Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, uh, they're powders. And about once every, well, maybe twice a month, somebody will say, I wish you'd put it in a pill form. I don't like the powder. Can't make everybody happy. So I looked into putting it in a pill form. It would about double or triple the price to take what you need if we put it in a pill or capsule form. So, you know, with powders, I just shake it up with some coconut milk, some almond milk, water if you want to. Uh, I mix it with a frozen banana sometimes or half a banana, whip it up, make a smoothie out of it. Uh, you can sprinkle it on your mashed potatoes. You can put it on your oatmeal. So there are ways to get it in your body. But I don't understand why people don't like powders. Just mix it. It tastes great. So I didn't get that one. So gummy bears, again, not good for the brain and not good for a, 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 a way to get uh, medication or supplements in your body. Now, I want to talk about fish for a second. Swordfish, particularly, I'm going to talk about that. That's one of the worst because it's very high in mercury in most cases. So people consume fish because they have what? Omega-3 fatty acids in them. And omega-3 fatty acids are good for your brain. My mother used to feed me fish, and she said it was brain food. I said, if it was so, if it was so good for your brain, why'd the fish get caught? You know? So it's not brain food, and I'm going to tell you why. Number one, many fish, especially the bigger fish, um, tuna, uh, swordfish, they run the risk of uh, mercury toxicity. Because the bigger a fish is, the older it is. The older it is, it's been around for a while and had a chance to accumulate mercury and heavy metals in its fat cells. So if you're going to do fish oil, I don't recommend you do that because the fish oil many times is contaminated with mercury. Not always, but many times it is. Also, the fish oil has to be converted into a phospholipid form. That's the form our body utilizes. Fish oil is not in a phospholipid form. If you take krill oil, krill is in a phospholipid form. So that's a better choice. And the krill are much smaller, less risk of toxicity, building up heavy metals. And heavy metals, when they get into the brain, not the music, but the chemical, when they get into your brain, can actually short-circuit your brain. Very, very dangerous to the brain. So I'm not a fan of fish for that reason. So let's assume, just for a second, you did something like, I don't know, a sardine, an anchovy, a herring, something that's really small and fatty, so it's going to have those omega-3 fatty acids in it. Better choice. Not the best, but a better choice. But here's the kick in the head. Any fish you eat, I'm ch chances are you're going to cook it, I assume. When you cook it, the heat destroys most, if not all, of the omega-3 fatty acids. The omega-3 fatty acids are not very heat stable. They don't like getting hot. And when they get hot, they change the molecular structure to the point where they're not useful anymore. So if you're eating fish and you think it's a brain food, the mercury, if it has mercury in it, can actually be dangerous to the brain and make the brain shut down permanently. And the omega-3s are destroyed if you cook it. So why would you eat the fish? I don't understand it. Krill, better choice. But another kick in the head. Krill and fish don't make omega-3 fatty acids. 
They get it from eating algae. Algae is the source of the omega-3 fatty acids in the fish world and in the human world. So I take an algae supplement every day because it's the purest form of omega-3, no risk of mercury toxicity. It's not heated, so you don't have to worry about it being destroyed when you cook it. And your brain requires it. It's called an essential fatty acid. Essential fatty acids mean they're essential. You have to get them from an outside source. You can't make them inside your body. So I take an algae oil every day, Dr. Joe's Omega-3. It's on the website, drjoe.com. The other supplements we talked about too, the B vitamins, the super greens, the essential source, all those are on the website, drjoe.com. If you're not willing to do anything else, Some of you are stubborn at this point. I'll win you over. I always do. But if you're stubborn and you're not willing to do anything else, at least take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Because even Essential Source, uh, Super Greens, I'm sorry, has omega-3 fatty acids in it from algae, from chlorella and spirulina. Chlorella also helps detoxify the liver. And Super Greens uh, is so good to alkalize the system. Omega-3 fatty acids, great for the liver. Essential Source, prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, complete multivitamin, fruits and vegetables, uh, enzymes are available because it's made in a raw form. So I take a scoop of each powder every day. You should too. If you're not willing to do anything else, at least super greens an essential source. You have to get omega-3 fatty acids from an outside source. You have to. And so that's why I take a supplement on that. I take a vitamin D supplement every day because I'm not out in the sun 20 minutes every day like I wish I was, but I don't have that lifestyle. So If I don't get out in the sun for 20 minutes a day, I take vitamin D. I take it all through the winter as well because you can't get enough sun in the winter anyway. Even if you're out there all day, it's the wrong wrong kind of sun. It's not the same angle. So we're talking today about foods that are good for your brain, foods that are bad for your brain. Another food bad for your brain are processed meats like hot dogs, cold cuts. They're not health food. (laughs) You consume them frequently. You're just wrecking havoc on your body. Now, if you are eating processed meats and you're avoiding the other foods, because many times if you're eating the meats and the dairy products, you're not, you don't have room for the fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. That worries me. A lot of studies link consumption of ultra-processed meats to negative effects on cognitive health. Recent study in European Journal of Nutrition showed that those who ate more ultra-processed meats and other foods showed less ability to perform on certain brain tests. And I was at a grocery store the other day. I won't give them a shout out. Um, And they have these amazing sandwiches. And if you just got a vegetable sandwich on a big, you know, one foot long, whatever it was, pretty big, it was $7 and change, 35 cents, whatever it was. If you got a foot long of the meat one, it was like double that. And I thought, why wouldn't you just get the veggie sandwich? Why would you want to throw all that meat and processed food and ultra processed foods and nitrates and nitrates and carcinogens? And why would you do that? When for half the price, you're getting the same amount of food, and it's way better for you. So that's why I said you got to make better choices. you got to think, what can I do today to make myself healthy? And in order for the brain to work and everything else to work, you have to have a normally functioning nervous system, normally functioning digestive system, and good nutrition. That's it. Three things. It's really simple. So in order to get those three things— uh, if nervous system, chiropractic care is, I, I can't imagine why it's not mandatory that everyone get their spine checked for pinched nerves. Because the catch is that 90% of your nerves don't feel pain. So you can have a pinched nerve and not know it. My team of doctors and me are trained to look for pinched nerves even if there's no pain. There's a test we can do, which is really cool. So when we evaluate a patient, we check everything. So you got to get, I, I can't recommend enough that you get a spinal evaluation. Now, if you have pain, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, hip pain, sciatica, folks, just go to your chiropractor first. In most cases, it's the quickest, easiest, fastest, cheapest way to get it resolved. Now, we can give you injections at certain clinics. We can give you medication at certain clinics, but that doesn't fix the cause. It treats the symptom. Now, if I'm in pain, I want to get rid of my pain. I'll take the medication, but I want to get to the cause of the pain, not just treat the symptom. So if you want to make an appointment to come see us, and we do nutrition evaluations on everybody, we check their digestive system, go to my website, drjoe.com, drjoe.com. You can book an appointment right online or call us. Normally, the first visit is $940. We've reduced that to $299 for my, my, my listeners. Exam, x-rays, consultation, first treatment, going over the x-rays, and a complete nutrition evaluation. 
We'd love to be your doctors. Let's get to the cause of your health care problems, not just treat the symptoms. Wouldn't it be cool for me and my doctors to be your doctors with nutrition and digestion, and supplements and, and pain management? And it's really cool. DrJoe.com do it. And all the supplements we talk about are on the website too, DrJoe.com. So nitrate, nitrite-containing meats such as hot dogs, ham, deli meats, increase the risk of neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, as well as cancer, cardiovascular disease, and diabetes. So next time you want to have a healthy sub, just get the vegetables. Lettuce, tomatoes, and pickles, and uh, 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 banana peppers, oil and vinegar. Again, it's on white bread, not my favorite meal. But it's the best, ch- better choice than what you're doing. It's all about better choices. And if you put vinegar on it, vinegar helps stabilize your blood sugar. I think vinegar should be a part of every diabetic's life and everybody trying to lose weight's life. Everybody's life, actually. Uh, I like raw organic apple cider vinegar. That's my favorite because it has the best benefits. All acetic acid, all vinegar is going to help stabilize blood sugar, but I recommend that you go with the apple cider vinegar. A lot of the wine vinegars, it's not even called wine vinegar, just red vinegar, many times they're made with petroleum products. Surprise! And it's really not vinegar anyway. So that's why I like the raw organic apple cider vinegar. But I digress. So we're talking today about the best and worst foods for your brain. Now, fast foods. What if I told you I'm not even going to talk about I probably will talk about the fast foods. The wrappers that they use in the fast food can affect your brain. Sometimes it's not the food, it's the packaging. Fast food wrappers are notorious to have something called PFAs. Now, these are chemicals that are linked to many negative health uh, reactions, including effect on cognitive health, your brain function. So PFAs are found in burger wrappers, pizza boxes, other packaging, because they're grease resistant. So otherwise it would leak through and you go, oh, my hamburger is leaking through the paper. This makes it grease resistant, but it also, these chemicals leach into the food and it can do severe damage to your body. So I don't have an answer for that one. Well, the way is just don't eat fast foods. But the wrappers, those papers, those boxes, uh, I used to work for pizza way back when. In fact, I graduated college and I delivered pizza during the de- at night and saw patients during the day and because I was broke. And I always lived in fear that someday I'd deliver a pizza to a patient, which I never did, thank God. But, you know, hey, Tom, here's your pizza. I'll see you Tuesday at the office, you know. But I worked. I didn't. I come from a poor family. I had to work. And back then it was different. The pizza would stick to the box. The, the uh, sauce would stick to the inside of the can. We had this giant spatula, I remember, scooping out the can to get all the sauce out you could. And so along came these PFAs, and now it, it's, it's uh, nonstick. You use it in, in pots and pans, too, which are very dangerous. And so it became nonstick coating on your wrapping, nonstick coating on your boxes, and that can leach into the food. So, again, I don't have an answer for you except don't eat fast food. Uh, other foods that are bad for your brain, and that, uh, coming up we'll talk about the foods that are good for your brain. If you eat something like a donut. Now, I also made the donuts. Yes, I was a baker. I was uh, 14 years old. I lied. I told them I was 16. And I was a baker. I used to make the donuts early in the morning before school. And donuts are like a triple whammy because they're sugar, they are fats, uh, and they're ultra processed with the chemicals and the dyes and the additives and the flavors. So donuts, they become deep fried, ultra processed. Another reason why you want to stay away from them. Now, I ain't going to lie to you. They tasted good. I enjoyed my donuts. I liked the cake donuts that were hot, fresh out of the boiling oil. And I'd put glaze on it and eat it to the point it was still burning because I was the baker. I can do that. And burn my mouth. But boy, they were great. But they are so bad for you on so many different levels. And what drives me crazy is a lot of corporations hire me. In fact, uh, I have to do a a big lecture this this upcoming week uh, for an international group. And I'm I'm the keynote speaker. And it's nice because I get paid for those. I like those. Uh, but I, I, I have to laugh when I go into companies that want me to do wellness programs and they have pizza and donuts for lunch as a lunch program. But I digress. Folks, got to go to break. If you have any questions, send them to me through my website, drjoe.com, D-R-J-O-E dot com. Uh, if you want to get the supplements, the Super Greens Essential Source, minimum, of course, nitric oxide to increase circulation, vitamin D, B-complex, those are all nootropics. Go to my website, drjoe.com. We ship the next business day, sometimes the same day. And if you want to come by and pick them up, in the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. But the most important thing you can do is make an appointment to come see us. Let's do an evaluation so we can find out specifically about your condition, 
What can we do as a team, my doctors and I and you, to help get you well and keep you well without drugs and surgery, preferably? So go to my website, drjoe.com. Be right back. All right. That's the bad stuff. Now we talk about the good stuff. It's only a few questions so far. <clears throat> um, is gardening and pulling weeds a good exercise? It's my favorite exercise. I was out there yesterday morning. It was actually a little chilly. And I was out there yesterday morning, and I, was, I took all my tomatoes and everything out. I, I lined my uh, gardens with really deep six, eight inches of wood chips. So I was moving wood chips and pulling out weeds, and absolutely. It's great. Just don't use pesticides if you, on your garden because then you inhale them. So. What else? Aluminum cans versus plastic bottles. Wow. Which one's less healthy? Wow, there's a uh, Sophie's Choice. Uh, <laughs> if the plastic bottle has cold stuff in it, I'd probably say the plastic bottle. If it has anything warm, the plastic can actually leach into the product. Um, I, I, I don't have an answer for that one. Stainless steel is going to be the best, so yeah. Can fruit juice be added to essential source for a sweeter flavor? Yes, it can. Or you can add a little stevia to it, too. In fact, Garrett, if you remind me, or John, I want to put a little note in there. If you want the Super Greens, the essential source sweeter, add a little stevia. Just put it, if you make a note, and just put it on the, on the website, okay? Because I've been meaning to do that for a long time. I keep forgetting. If you want it a little sweeter, just add a tiny touch of stevia, okay? Um, yes, you can. Although fruit juice is very high in sugar. So it's not my preferred liquid, but... You know, Alita Adams had a song. I don't care how you get here. Just get here if you can. And I don't care how you get the super greens and essential source in your body. Just get it in there. I prefer you do unsweetened coconut milk or almond milk or water. But if I'm go it's going to get you to take the super greens and essential source, I'm going to give you the blessing on that. Uh, is chicken salad a healthier choice than cold cuts? Wow. Another Sophie's choice. What do you got, Sophie on here? Um, chicken's bad for many reasons. Cold cuts are the worst. So if I had to pick one... I'm not saying it's good for you. I would not recommend eating chicken salad. It's not as bad as cold cuts. Still bad. Even with all the mayonnaise and... With the mayonnaise and everything else. The cold cuts are still the worst with the nitrosamines, the nitrates and nitrites. and the, So, yeah. So, cold cuts are the worst. So, if you really just want to kill yourself, just make a ham salad and get it over with. You know, Boom. Done. That is, put me in your will. That is in every Midwestern salad. Yes, it is. <laughs> just put me in your will. You know, folks, I, I should say that. If you're not willing to change, at least put me in your will. Because then I know I have an uh, ongoing income source forever. So <laughs> I always joked about one of my friends. He always drank diet soda. And I always said, Larry, uh, I've met several Larrys, but my one friend Larry had kidney failure. And he was drinking diet soda. I said, Larry, I'm going to take out a life insurance policy on you. And sure enough, he died. And I should have done it. And I didn't. So he didn't listen to me, though. What else? That's it. Okay. Part two. Go to a cocktail party tonight. Got to get all dressed up. I brought my nice suit and everything. So it's for the lecture I'm giving tomorrow. And this is their cocktail party for the group. So, all right, we ready? Hey, let's start over. Hold on. There we go. All right, ready? Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. We are talking today about the best and worst foods for your brain. Now, we talked earlier about some of the worst foods. And it's funny because whenever I do a best and worst show like this, it inevitably comes down to almost the same thing that I've taught for 40 years, the seven deadly sins of nutrition. Because years ago, I remember sitting in my office and thinking, all right, how could I narrow this whole nutrition scope down so it's really simple to <laughs> digest and make it so simple for folks? And I brought it down to seven foods. And those seven foods would be alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. If you're like most, many people, you just said, wait, Dr. Joe, say that again. Alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. That's all I eat. And that's what most people do. And that's why most people at 50 and 60 are ready to wrap up their lives. I had a patient come in the other day, and he was, what, 38 or something like that. He says, man, I just hope I make it to 50. I thought, make it to 50? That's the halfway point, man. You got a whole other half coming up. And that mentality is, you know, people die early and they, they kill themselves and people get diseases. But a lot of those things are self-induced. And a lot of brain function damage is self-induced. In fact, two out of three of, of you people listening right now, if well, you're listening, you're special. Two out of three of average Americans are going to get cognitive impairment. Their brain is not going to work like it used to once they hit 70. 
and they're going to start to go on a downhill slope after 70. I don't want that for you. I want you to be like a candle. I want you to burn bright from the moment you're born toward the end, flicker maybe once or twice, and then go out. I want you to burn bright your whole life. And a lot of the things that you do are self-induced. I mean, I couldn't complain too much. It's, it's job security for me. As long as people keep screwing themselves up, I have a job. I always thought if the whole world listened to me, I'd be out of a job. That would be an ironic twist, wouldn't it? That I worked myself out of a job. I would be thrilled if I could work myself out of a job. I, that means the world would be healthy. But so far, I made inroads. Not as, not as many as I want. So we talked about the bad foods, basically alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, fried foods. Uh, artificial sweeteners are bad for the brain, sugars. Now we're going to talk about the brain-boosting foods, the foods that you need to have in your body to make your brain work more efficiently. Now, learning, thinking, problem-solving, decision-making, and being able to pay attention fall under the term of what's called cognitive function. Can you function in society? Unfortunately, like I said, two out of three Americans are going to have impairment by the time they're 70. Now, this age is the greatest risk factor for experiencing cognitive declines. Other risk factors come into play. Family history, education, brain injury. I have a traumatic brain injury. Notice I said have, not had. I was hit by a car when I was 10 years old. Severe traumatic brain injury. I was unconscious for three days. That's called a severe traumatic brain injury. I should be dead. In fact, they covered me up on the side of the road. They thought I was dead. I damaged the ligaments in my neck. I damaged my brain severely. Then I went ahead and played football for five years, and I went ahead and played hockey for about seven years. So a lot of traumatic brain injuries in my life. Had I not, if I didn't do what I do, I would not be here today talking to you. My brain would not be able to comprehend everything I'm telling you. I couldn't even listen to me because I couldn't understand what I was saying. So I understand brain function really well because my brain should be a lot worse than it is. I shouldn't be here talking to you right now. So I've done the things that I'm teaching you today to keep my brain working. Because when I tell people the type of injury I had and I look, they look at my x-rays and they look at my studies, my MRIs, they're like, I'm surprised you're alive. So I had a struggle to get to where I am. And I, you don't have to struggle. I've done all the work for you. So a lot of things uh, go into, like we said, brain function. But physical inactivity, bad food, this can lead to Parkinson's, heart disease, stroke, diabetes. And believe it or not, a lot of the brain foods you think were brain foods are not. Earlier, we talked about fish. Fish are high in omega-3 fatty acids, but several things wrong with that. Number one, many fish are high in mercury. Stay away from them. If a fish isn't high in mercury, as soon as you cook the fish, most, if not all, the omega-3 fatty acids are destroyed by the heat. Oh, I'm going to have a herring. I'm going to have a mackerel. I'm going to have tuna. And it's going to be so good for my brain because it has omega-3 fatty acids in it. No, it doesn't. Not anymore. And so you got to be even salmon. If you get farm-raised salmon, the salmon get the omega-3s from eating f small fish that eat algae. Salmon that are farm-raised are fed things like corn and soybeans, which don't have omega-3 fatty acids in them. So the fish are b essentially dead of omega-3 fatty acids. Well, they're dead when you eat them, but they're uh, void of omega-3 fatty acids. So you want to stay away from uh, that as well. If you're going to eat fish, please don't eat farm-raised fish. Oh, my gosh. I, mm, ah, kills me. All right. Studies have shown that foods we include in our diet are so important for brain health. They make the brain work. Memory, overall cognition. Evidence shows that low-fat diets appear to be protective against cognitive problems. And the best diet, they talk about the Mediterranean diet, the DASH diet, the MIND diet. All of them are based in a similar platform. Eat more fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Eat less alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweeteners. So every time a new diet comes out that's recommended for a certain disease, I just have to laugh. I say, wait, we did this before. We did this with the Mediterranean diet. We did it with the DASH diet. We did it with the MIND diet. It's essentially the same basis. And the most important part of all of them are the plants, the fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Some eat a little fish. Some eat a little wine. Some eat a little olive oil. The main core of it is the plant-based diet. Why wouldn't you eat a plant-based diet? I don't know. I don't have that answer for you. But if I can educate you enough and pound this stuff into your head, hopefully you'll say, you know what? 
I say the three words I love. I always say I love a woman to whisper these three words in my ear. That makes sense. I want it to make sense to you. I want you to say, you know what? I get it. I could have a turkey sandwich or I can have a veggie sandwich. I'm going to have the veggie sandwich. I can have a salad or I could have fried chicken. I'm going to have the salad. I could have lentil soup or I can have a ham. I'm going to have the lentil soup. There's about 120,000 good foods that you can eat. If you don't know what they are, go to my website, drjoe.com. Type these two things. I want you to listen to these two lectures that I gave. One is called The Seven Deadly Sins of Nutrition. That's going to tell you what not to eat. If you want to skip that one, you can. Go right on to the one that says, so what can I eat? Follow that. Here's my challenge to you. I want you to do everything I say for 60 days. Listen to so what can I eat. Take some supplements, Dr. Joe Super Greens and Dr. Joe Essential Source, minimum supplements. I would add omega-3 fatty acids to that. I would add vitamin D to that. I would add B vitamins to that. That's the minimum. Again, that's the minimum, minimum. I would add a lot more to that specifically for you. I take nitric oxide to increase circulation throughout my body. I think you should too. If you have low blood pressure, don't take nitric oxide. But if you have normal or high blood pressure, opens up your blood vessels, increases circulation to the body, the brain, the sex organs, the heart, the lungs, can help lower blood pressure. We have answers. We have so many answers. In fact, I met with um, the head of the VA in Georgia. I was at a conference. And he and I sat down and chatted for a few seconds. And he said, let me give you my number. So I need to call him because the VA needs help. We want to get these people healthy. And we just don't have the medical facilities to take care of all these people. And so we're going to talk to him and see what we can do. I hope we hopefully this goes somewhere. And my friend Steve is hopefully going to head up this whole program and I'll help out as well. But the realization is there. We're spending more money and getting less results when it comes to healthcare. Why do we keep doing the same thing over and over again? That's insanity, right? So taking supplements. So 60 days, listen to So What Can I Eat? Eat like that for 60 days. At least take super greens and essential source. For those of you who are serious, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D, nitric oxide, and B-complex. First of all, you're going to save way more money than you could ever imagine. You can buy the supplements eat like this and still have money left over because it's so much cheaper to eat this way than it is to eat the bad way. Give me 60 days. Give me 30 days. Give me a week. And let's see what happens. Let's assume I'm wrong. So what? I'm wrong. You ate well. You took some supplements. Go back to your old lifestyle. But if I'm right, which I am, then you'll say, I I promise you, you'll say, that's all I had to do. That's it? It was that easy? Yes. This is one of the easiest things you'll ever do. Super high reward, very little work. Why wouldn't you do it? I like it. That's why I do it. Maybe I'm just lazy in my life. Maybe I got into this lifestyle because I'm so lazy, and it's the easiest way to live. But I want your brain to function the best it possibly can because I see people in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and their brain just isn't there anymore. I want to bring my mom to come see you. I got a call like this the other day. I want to bring my mom to come see you. She's starting to lose her mind a little bit. So when you come in, you'll have to talk slow. I know you talk fast, Dr. Joe. But when she comes in, I want you to discuss with her what she needs to do. Woman comes in. She's in her mid-50s. And she's already, in Italian, we say tuzi pats. Tuzi pats is like a little dopey, okay? If you're Italian, you just laughed. I know you did. And uh, so there's a little tuzi pats. And I, I, I'm talking to her, and I'm thinking, this woman is substantially younger than me. Why is her brain not working properly? No traumatic brain injuries, no head injuries like I've had. Why is she like this? And then I looked at her lifestyle. Sure enough, diet sodas, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas. And so it, she just kind of started, so hopefully we get some good results with her. But you have decisions to make when it comes to food. All right, let's talk about some of the best foods that you can eat for the brain. Of course, super greens, an essential source, nitric oxide, B-complex. We talked about those. Those are on the website, drjoe.com. If you don't remember what they are, send me a message through the website, and I'll give them to you. Mushrooms. How about that? Mushrooms are great. They taste wonderful. I love them. I eat them quite often. Now, it's a great source of ergothionine. Ergothionine is an antioxidant that works great with helping the brain work more efficiently. It may contribute to healthy aging, cognitive uh, benefits, uh, reduced stress. 
and help you all the way around. Now, if you eat mushrooms, when you start eating them initially, it might cause a little gas. You might get a little bloated. That's okay. Just expect it. It'll go away as your body gets used to it. Now, researchers, research published in a British Journal of Nutrition, positioned ergotheanine as a longevity vitamin, suggesting that this veggie may be an important source of nutrients supporting healthy aging and cognitive functions. Now, there are certain types of mushrooms that work better. Shiitake, oyster, and mitake are the highest amount of this antioxidant. So, get some mushrooms. Uh, you can eat them raw. You can saute them a little bit. Um, I have a, an oven, a glass top, a glass dome oven that I use, and I'll just put a little uh, uh, balsamic vinegar, on it, organic balsamic vinegar, some salt and pepper, and I'll roast them up a little bit. Amazing. Walnuts. Walnuts are loaded with omega-3 fatty acids, and that's why they're one of the best foods for your brain. If I had to pick the best nut of the fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, walnuts wins hands down. Now, they're packed with healthy fat. They help, uh, they, they help cognitive function. Uh, according to the results of the Walnuts and Healthy Aging Study, yes, someone called it the Walnuts and Healthy, healthy Aging Study, randomized control group evaluated the effects of eating 30 to 60 grams of walnuts every day for two years. Daily walnut consumption looks like it might delay cognitive decline among those who are at a higher risk. I don't like eating that many nuts because they're high in fat and they make me fat. So what I do, and I had walnuts actually today, I had two handfuls, I take about two handfuls of nuts and then I stop. Because what happens is this. You're hungry. I'm going to eat what Dr. Joe says. I'm going to eat fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Dr. Joe, I'm putting on weight like crazy. You told me this was healthy. What are you eating? Well, I ate a bag of walnuts every day. That's too much. Okay, a handful, two handfuls, stop. It takes 20 minutes to get the message from your stomach to your brain. So give yourself a chance to feel full. You don't have to stuff yourself to feel full. Take two handfuls, wait 20 minutes. If you're still hungry, eat some more. Now, what, I, what happens with me is if my stomach is pushed up against my diaphragm, first thing that happens is I burp a lot. I feel bloated. My breath stinks. And I know my stomach is pushed up against my diaphragm. When that happens, the thing that I noticed most is that I want to keep eating. I'm full. I know I've had enough food, but I want to keep eating. I believe that that's due to the fact that my stomach isn't sending messages to my brain. Uh, leptin is released from the stomach, goes into the hypothalamus to say that I'm full. Because I know this. Once I get my stomach adjusted or pull the stomach away from the diaphragm, almost instantly, within minutes... I'm not hungry anymore. So if you just can't stop eating, I'm going to bet that your stomach is pushed up against your diaphragm. Come see us because it's a very simple technique. It might take several visits to make it stay, but we can pull the stomach away from the diaphragm. We also want to check your nervous system. The nervous system controls everything, including brain function. I cannot tell you how many patients over the years, because I never kept count, but there were a lot, that when they got their neck adjusted, put the bones back in place, it opened up the nerve and blood supply to the brain, and they started thinking better. It happens all the time. I mean, it's like a daily, hourly occurrence, 10-minute occurrence. It happens all the time. So if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, sciatica, chances are very strong that you have pinched nerves in the back. And by putting the bones back in place, chiropractic adjustments, we open up the nerve supply to the organs, including the brain, and the body functions much better. So you think, well, it's just back pain. It's just neck pain. I took some ibuprofen. I took some acetaminophen, and I, I got my pain under control. All the drugs have side effects to the liver, negative side effects, but you're still not getting to the cause. You're just treating the symptoms. And when we can evaluate your nervous system, your digestive system, your diet, your supplement intake, if you're taking them, if not, we may recommend some, let's get to the cause of your problem. Now, you don't have to do everything I say. Some people get scared. Well, Dr. Joe, I was going to come see you, but you were going to tell me to give up meat. No, I'm not going to tell you to give up meat. I'm going to recommend better options, but whatever you decide to do is always up to you. But don't hesitate any longer. Take the step to get yourself well. I don't know why you're not doing it. It makes no sense to me. DrJoe.com, you can book an appointment this week. We have offices in the Atlanta area, Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. We have, patients, uh, we have patient visits available this week. And whenever you're listening to it, it's this week. Because we want to get you well and keep you well. 
So drjoe.com, you can book it right online. Normally, the first visit is $940. We've reduced that to $299. Exam, x-rays, consultation, first treatment, going over the x-rays, and a complete nutrition evaluation. X-rays alone are going to cost you more than that anywhere else. Make the investment in your health. We accept most insurances. Probably half our patients are cash patients because it's so inexpensive to get well and stay well. Some people don't even use their insurance because the deductible is so ridiculously high. Four or $5,000 deductibles. That's stupid. That's not insurance. Anyway, don't get me started on insurances. So drjoe.com, we'd love to see you. Medicare, uh, we accept Medicare. If, if you're a VA, uh, if your doctor at the VA refers you to us, we are on a referral list for VA. So if the doctor refers you from the VA, the VA pays for your treatments. So drjoe.com, make your appointment right now. All the supplements are on our website, drjoe.com. Also, I got a lot more to cover. But follow me on social media, at Dr. Joe Esposito, at Dr. Joe Esposito, all one word. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. We post health tips every single day. You're going to get one-minute health tips every single day from me. Why wouldn't you do it? It's free. If you have any questions, send them to me through the website, drjoe.com. If you're a podcast junkie, go to your podcast service and type in Dr. Joe for the health of it. Dr. Joe for the health of it. And we put up podcasts at least twice a week. So you have social media, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, uh, TikTok. You have our website, drjoe.com. We post all our shows on Facebook and our website. So you can go there and and listen for old shows. Type in the search bar what you're looking for on a website. Chances are we've done shows for it for you or did did a blog or something on it. You have uh, your uh, podcast, Dr. Joe for the health of it. And you have my website. You have any questions, send me the question. I can't make this any easier for you, folks. Unless I came to your house, which I'm not going to do, I can't make it any easier for you. So if you're serious, drjoe.com, make your appointment right now for you, your friends, your family, and your children. Children need to get checked to make sure their spine is healthy, their nervous system and digestive system is healthy. And we would love to be your doctors. We can work with other doctors. We co-manage many, many, many cases. So if you have a specific disease, you can see us and your other doctors. I don't know how to make it easier. Drjoe.com. All right, other foods that are good for your brain. Let's talk about that. Uh, Oranges, green leafy vegetables, pretty much colorful foods. Berries. The brighter the color, the better off it's going to be. Pomegranates, not pomegranate juice, too too much sugar. Not orange juice, oranges. The whole orange has fiber, and the fiber pushes the sugar through the colon and gives you a slow release of energy. A big blast of sugar all at once, like juices, fruit juices, I'm not a fan of. Okay, but still better than soda, but not good. Green leafy vegetables, you've got to have a salad, folks. If you Find out what you like. In fact, I was just talking to a new patient the other day, and a very lovely young woman, and she said, I'm a very picky eater. I said, here's what I want you to do. Make a list of everything that you'll eat, everything. I don't care what it is, if it's candy, if it's a mint, if it's a romaine lettuce, whatever it is, make a list. And then go through the list and say, these are healthy, these are not. Now you have a list of healthy foods that you'll eat. And as you eat more and more healthy foods, what happens is your taste buds change. You're going to start opening your mind up, opening your taste buds up to more food. It always happens. So it's not even a question. Of course, it's going to happen. And you're going to expand your palate. And it's really kind of cool. But I know this raising children. People say, well, Doc, my kid is, oh, hardly eats anything. Make a list of everything they eat. Well, they eat avocados. They eat cereal. They eat chocolate. They eat cookies. Uh, they eat oranges. Okay, so now we have av- avocados and oranges, at least in a good list. What else? They like broccoli? No. Like spinach? Yes. Okay, add that to it. And when you go through it, you'll be amazed how many good foods you actually like. And then you just eat more of those and less of the other foods. This is not hard. And then when you start taking things like super greens and essential source, your, your taste buds change, your palate changes, and you start enjoying more and more good foods, which is really kind of fun. And watermelon. The flesh of the watermelon is loaded with vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. It has carotenoids in it called lycopene. Uh, It's a plant compound, and it's found in red and pink foods, like watermelon. Uh, Neuroprotective properties due to antioxidants and anti-inflammatory functionality. Now, watermelon also has something in it called citrulline. Citrulline converts into nitric oxide in your body. Nitric oxide opens up your blood vessels and increases circulation. Now, if you eat a lot of watermelon, it still has sugar in it, and that can make you gain weight or blow you up, get you bloated. So maybe just a slice or two. You don't have to eat all watermelon. Now, vegetables are fine. Eat as many vegetables as you want, but watermelon still has sugar in it. 
And watermelon is great. Now, I would recommend getting the seeded kind, not the seedless kind. The seedless kind have been hybridized. So the seeded kind has, I feel, a better choice. It was interesting. A systemic uh, literature review in the Journal of Nutrition Science, available data shows a significant positive relationship between lycopene consumption, found in watermelons, and cognitive maintenance, keeping the brain working. Data also exists that shows a significant association between lower circulating lycopene and higher rates of Alzheimer's and mortality. Now, I'll play devil's advocate on that study. If you're eating watermelon, chances are you're eating other fruits and vegetables too. If you're not eating watermelon, chances are you're not eating other fruits and vegetables. So it may not be the watermelon necessarily, but your lifestyle. And the pink and green uh, varieties uh, loaded with lycopene, the yellow and orange watermelon varieties have other important compounds that are good for the brain as well. Yellow watermelon is rich in beta carotene, and that, has, that converts into vitamin A in the body. And beta carotene is list po- list, linked to positive effects on cognitive decline in older adults. So we have the answers to so many of your health problems. If you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, chiropractic care, most effective, least expensive. The best foods to eat for brain function, for health, for reducing your risk of heart disease, diabetes, cancer, obesity, are fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, a plant-based diet. Staying away from certain types of meat, staying away from all meats, in my opinion, but staying away from cold cuts. We talked about how bad that is. Fried foods, stay away from it. I like those foods, but that doesn't mean I'm going to eat them because to me, I want to live a long, happy, healthy, high-energy life. And I'm not willing to sacrifice it for a moment of pleasure like a roast beef sandwich. It's not worth it to me. And again, once you start eating better, your your palate changes. So folks, I'm almost out of time. I would love to be your doctor. I would love my team of doctors to be your doctor. So the best thing I feel you can do for your health is make an appointment with us so we can put together a customized plan just for you. Go to my website, drjoe.com. You can book an appointment right online. We can do virtual appointments. If you can't come see us, we can do a virtual appointment. We're happy to do that for you too. Minimum supplements, again, super greens, an essential source. I would add on nitric oxide, vitamin D, uh, omega-3 fatty acids, B vitamins. Try it. If I'm wrong, so what? I'm wrong, but I'm not wrong. On my website, again, drjoe.com. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Thanks for tuning in. All right. Always fun. What do you have? What do you have? All right. I have a walnut oil that is not out of date and kept cool. Is that too processed to get the benefits I would use in a salad dressing? No, it's okay. And then let's see here. Uh, hi, Dr. Joe. My doctor says I have an active thyroid. She's recommending medication. Yep. Do I have any alternative to prescription medication? Go to my website, drjoe.com, and type thyroid in the search bar and listen to that show. Hyperactive thyroid is almost always an autoimmune disease. Your body is attacking itself. And so stop the body from attacking itself. The thyroid medicine might help, and it might be necessary. But let's see if we can get to the cause of the problem, which is maybe the autoimmune disease. So right now, starting at this moment in time, I want you to cut out all wheat and all dairy products. Those are the two that cause a big autoimmune reaction. I want you to start taking super greens and essential source immediately because they're high in iodine. And the thyroid needs iodine to function normally. So listen to the thyroid show, Super Greens and Essential Source, no wheat and dairy. Cut out the other seven deadly sins too. And then come see us because you may have a pinched nerve in the neck that controls the thyroid. And then we can check your, auto, uh, your digestive system, see if we get that autoimmune system under control. What else? Dr. Joe, I've started taking methane, but I see recommendations to make DEM more efficient needed to take phase two, which makes the protocol more expensive. What do you suggest? I don't know what you're talking about. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, send me an email with all your, with, with everything you just said, Dr. Joe at the doc, doc, uh, you can go to drjoe.com, you can send it through the website. And I, I need to understand what you're talking about a phase two. I don't know what that is. And uh, I may know what it is. I don't understand what you're saying though. So send me an email on that one. All right, what else? What are some of the problems, some of the carnivore diet? <laughs> all right listen i'm already in my 60s okay i want to live another 40 50 years but i don't have enough time to cover how bad the carnivore diet is <laughs> it's high acid it, it's it, it, it's saturated fats it's steroids chemicals hormones antibiotics pesticides herbicide genetically modified food glyphosate builds up in, in the animal fats 
Uh, it clogs up your colon. It doesn't have fiber. It doesn't have phytonutrients in it. It speeds up the aging process, increases your risk of heart disease, diabetes, cancer, obesity, colon cancer, colon problems. It lowers your testosterone, knocks the... Uh, I can't say that on the air. It can lower, <laughs> lower your sex drive function. Um, that should be enough. Not to mention it's just twice as much energy or, or more. Yeah, so much energy to digest it. It costs so much more money. It makes your breath stink. Makes you makes your farts stink. I mean, why the hell would you do it? So, anyway. I love a good meat sweat. <laughs> I remember them. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've had one, but I've had them. So. Um, is cauliflower rice a better choice than, all, than regular rice? Yes. Uh, what if you put the rice in the fridge after you after you cook it and then and take it out the next day? It becomes a resistant starch, which is absolutely the only way I'd ever recommend you eat any starchy food, which would be potatoes, rice, things like that. Cook it. Put it in the refrigerator overnight. Take it out the next day. You can heat it the next day if you want to, but it changes the structure of the of this carbohydrates and makes it a resistant starch. You're going to absorb about 40% less of the carbohydrates, and the resistant starches become uh, prebiotics, which feed the good bacteria. So if you're going to eat rice, make sure it's organic. From California, by the way. California has the lowest amount of arsenic of any rice. And organic potatoes or uh, squashes. Cook them, cool them overnight. You're going to get a much better bang for your buck. But you still recommend cauliflower rice. Still recommend cauliflower rice over it, yes. And um, what are your thoughts on some of the um, some of the hair coloring kits? Just the, mainly the ones that are specific to men, but soaks healthy, right into your brain. Or, yep. Right into your brain, man. That's like man just taking kerosene and pouring it on a fire. Uh, don't do it. They have natural ones. They don't work as well. Uh, what I did when I started turning gray uh, about 10 years ago, I did a hair analysis. We, we can do it in our office. We can send you the kit, as a matter of fact. And we do a hair analysis, and I was low in selenium. And as soon as I upped my selenium intake, my gray hair went away, and it's, I have a little gray in my beard, nothing on my chest, nothing in my hair. Um, so we can do a hair analysis to see if it's due to a nutrient deficiency. Not saying it is. Mine was. Okay? But, yeah, I would stay away from the hair dyes. But people ask me all the time, Dr. Joe, you're in your 60s. You dye your hair? Not one day in my life have I ever dyed my hair. So, What else you got? That's it. Just remember, the body is a sponge. Body's a sponge. Whatever you put on, it's going to be absorbed. Garrett is exactly right. That goes for clothes soap. That goes for shampoos, conditioners, colognes, deodorant. I've done shows on that already. Uh, don't put anything. Here's my rule. Don't put anything on your skin that you wouldn't eat. Not that you couldn't eat. How about that? Not that you would eat it. I wouldn't eat soap, uh, like Castile soap, but I could eat it. So, All right, folks, I appreciate it. Please follow me on all uh, platforms, at Dr. Joe Esposito. That's my, my request from you. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. And if you're listening live, put in right now hashtag live. If you're listening on recording, put in hashtag replay.